Hi, I'm Lisa Pan, and today I'll be talking about Redux Form. Uh, before we begin, I want to go into the history of web forms. So in the beginning, we had HTML forms. Um, they look pretty similar to how they do today, uh, but all the rendering and processing was done on the server, which meant that there was no client-side validation, and if you did have a validation error, um, you had to re-render the whole page to display that error. Then we had jQuery and Ajax, which made things better. Um, they allowed you to submit forms without re-rendering the whole page. Uh, but the state, of the, the, the state of the form was still in the DOM inputs. Then we had Angular, um, also Ember. Uh, and these bridged the DOM and JavaScript using two-way data binding. Uh, however, the single source of truth was left ambiguous for that reason. And then finally, we had React, which introduced one-way data flow, uh, which gives JavaScript all of the control. Um, so the state of the data comes down, and then changes are sent back up via events. And then the UI is rendered based on the state. So what is form state? At its most basic definition, um, it's just the values in each form field, so in each input. Um, however, it can also mean validation, such as like whether or not the inputs in your form are valid. Uh, any changes made, so like if the current value of the inputs is different from um, what originally came from the database. Whether or not an input has been touched, so if the user has gone to that field and then left it. Whether or not that field is active and whether or not the form has been submitted. So why do we want to use Redux form? Well, React, um, forms in React require a lot of state updating boilerplate, and it's just, it's just messy to write really complex forms with purely React. So Redux form marries Redux to React um, by connecting the form to the Redux state and then providing event listeners to the form elements, dispatching Redux actions, updating the state, and then updating the input component. So um, this allows for much more debuggable forms. So the most important component that you get with the Redux form library is the field component. So a simple field component looks like this. It connects you to the Redux, it connects the input to the Redux store, and it requires the name and component props. A little bit more of a complex field looks like this, and it just injects all these other props to your input. So the, the type, the label, um, the validate function, those all get injected to your input component. And that's what a simple field looks like. So now I'm going to demonstrate for you, whoops, I'm going to demonstrate for you um, the differences between coding um, forms in React and um, coding them using Redux form. So at just like a first glance, you can tell that on the left side, this React form is just a lot more lines of code. Let me zoom in a bit. So when you're coding forms with React, you have to write all these different change handlers and your handle submit, whoops, and you have to have your constructor and you have to bind all your change handlers, and then you've got your render function here. Now with Redux form, it does all of that for you. So these two, um, forms right now render the exact same thing, which you can see right here. Um, it's just a basic form, lets you type in your name and your email, but there is no validation whatsoever. So if I delete my email there, it doesn't yell at me and say that the email is required. Um, I could put in a totally bogus entry there and still submit it. Right now my form just outputs um, a little alert telling you what you submitted. 
But let's make this form uh, a little bit more robust, and you'll see how easy that is to do using Redux form. Down here, I have some validation functions that I've just commented out, and so let's bring those back in. This one just um, makes a field required, and this one checks if it's a valid email in the input. And then here we have a, um, a normalizing function so that whatever you type into the field will be capitalized. And now to use those functions, all you have to do is pass down some validate props. and normalize prop. Let's just copy those into our other fields here. And let's add the email validation to the email field. Now, if we go back to our form and we refresh the page, so you can't see what I'm typing on my keyboard right now, but I'm not using the shift key or caps lock, but all my inputs are automatically capitalized now. And then if I enter a field, type something in, and then leave it, it's going to tell me that that field is required. Or if I type something in that's not an email, it tells me that it's an invalid email address. And the submit button is disabled because my input is not valid. And as I've been typing in all these changes to my form, down here I have the Redux dev tool open. And you can see all these different um, actions are being dispatched. And these all just come with Redux form. I didn't write them. Blur is just when you, so focus is when you enter an input, uh, input field. So you'll see I clicked on an input and it came in focus. And then when you leave that field, it's blurred. And then if you look at the state over here, you have all your form values right there. So what inspired me to look into an easier way to write forms? At my previous job, um, I worked with restaurant owners and managers entering their menus into their uh, point of sale system. And when they first start working with us, they have to give us their, their menu in some, some form, and we either help them enter it for a large fee, or they do it themselves for free. Or there's an intermediate step where they can fill out this template and we'll enter the template information for them. However, an Excel template is not the best. There's a lot of data validation on these different pages. Data validation is very easily broken, especially since um, a lot of our customers are not terribly tech savvy. Some, some of them are the types who can't open their email. So obviously when they open up Excel, they get a little bit panicked. And so we needed a better way to deal with this. And so I started a little project to create this nice form that we can send to them rather than an Excel spreadsheet. So at the top, you would enter in your restaurant name or cafe. And then you can add a menu. So that's usually there's like a food menu and a drink menu. And then you can add groups to those menus. So let's say we've got appetizers, entrees, desserts. And then you want to add items to those groups. So let's say we have chicken nuggets. And they are $6.99. And then you want to add modifiers to those items. So let's say sauce choice, honey mustard, barbecue sauce. 
So this is just like a much more user-friendly version of the same thing that you saw in that Excel spreadsheet. Um, and yeah, that's, that's what inspired me to look into forms. And thank you.